Hi, my name's Gary Schofield. Very much looking forward to naming my all-time 13. And I can reassure you, this has been very, very tough. And the quality players I have played with over a 16-year career. A fullback. Boy, oh boy, I've had to leave some quality out here. In the likes of Joe Lydon, Gary Kemble, Steve Hampson. But my fullback is my Balmain teammate in Gary Jack. Absolute sheer quality. From a point of view, defensive wise, if anybody did break the line, where well, you could be almost guarantee that Gary Jack will be stopping a four pointer. And certainly, when you're looking for a fullback to come into the line and breaking the line and scoring the four pointer, there wasn't anyone better than my fullback selection in Gary Jack. And now, my wingers, and that's for leaving out my quality wingers from there. I'm looking at Desi Drummond, I'm looking at Dane O'Hara, Andrew Ettenhausen, and my old great, great Britain teammate in Carl Gibson. Boy, oh boy, when you look at these two wingers and the try scoring exploits they had, well, I tell you what, there won't be too many about who can play or even score the tries like these two wingers did. The first winger, Martin of Fire. What can you say about Martin? And you know what makes me laugh? People keep saying, do you know what? Martin couldn't tackle. Wasn't interesting that Martin of Fire could not tackle because, boy, oh boy, could he score tries. Martin of Fire scored tries that nobody else would have scored. He went looking for that ball. He went in field. And I know for sure he scored tries no other wingers would have scored because he went looking for that ball. He had the pace to go through the smallest of gaps. And Martin Afire, what, just short of 500 tries? And people tell me he couldn't defend. Couldn't care less about that. Absolute sheer quality and one of the best wingers that rugby league will ever produce. And on the other wing, well, he's uh, from the same area where I come from, the little dynamo himself in Jason Robinson. Saw Jason play very much in his amateur days where I was on Park Parkside, destined for the top. But in them days, Jason was a scrum half. But in the professional game, he wasn't going to be a scrum half. He was just going to be that this individual maverick. And I think we all saw that in his very, very young days at Wigan. And then certainly, Certainly that try would have scored in the grand final to win the first grand final for Wigan just showed you how dynamic Jason Robinson was. Footwork, speed, and I tell you what, if you wanted somebody to make a difference on the Rupert League field, well you've got it certainly from my pair of wingers in Jason Robinson and Martin Afire. My two centres, oh, this was very, very tough and when I'm leaving the likes of Craig Guinness, Kevin Iro, Daryl Powell, Paul Lachlan, Paul Newlove and Gary Connolly out of my 13. Well, you'll understand why when you name my right centre and left centre. At number three, I've got the Pearl himself in Ellery Anley. When you want somebody to come up with that try saving tackle, the Pearl will do that for you. When you want somebody to be a game changer, to come up with that champion try, as we all saw for Bradford Northern against Featherston many, many years ago, I don't think there's been a try scored for many, many years on that sort of standard. But what you got with Ellery was quite simply, a leader on that field. Whatever position Ellery played, Ellery Anley as a centre, defensive wise, try scoring wise, you won't find anybody better in the right centre than the Pearl himself in Ellery Anley. My left centre, my old teammate at Hull, Jimmy Lulawai. Mr. Stylish centre, boy oh boy. Did he have an impact? He was a proper wingers man. He loved to set up his wingers, but also to what Jimmy had. He had that vision as well. He had that pace. He had everything in a centre wanted. Defensive wise, very solid. As far as an all round centre goes, they want anybody better than my old teammate in Jimmy Lulawai. At standoff, there's my old Balmain teammate and Great Britain teammate, Tony Myler. Boy oh boy, could Tony Myler play. When you talk about not just creative wise, when you talk about somebody who is a team player, I'm talking about a standoff here who was tough. Tony was built, everybody said, maybe like a loose forward, but the vision and awareness what Tony Myler had, he had pace. Maybe he had pace, maybe just over 20, 30 metres, and then he was looking for that creativity for the support players. But what you get with champion players is what Tony Myler could do. And I know exactly what he did when we played against Australia in 86 Test Series by setting up the tries for myself. So Tony Myler is my number six. Scrum half, there's no arguments about this, surely. Peter Sterling is my scrum half. Remember the 1982 tour with the Kangaroos? 
I was watching on television like everybody else, and everybody was thinking, who's this scrawny little scrumath? Who's this scrumath with a long blonde hair? Surely, he can't be a rugby league player. He can't be that good to play for the Kangaroos. When I managed to play with him at Hull, and also to play against him in 1984, you just appreciate what a great player he was. He turned the tap on and turned the tap off. When it needed champion players to be coming up, he was making sure that he would be the champion player where he was. I tell you what, it might not be quick between the legs, but where he is quick is between the ears. And Sterling will go down as one of the best number sevens that's ever played rugby league. So now I'm coming on to the forwards, Steve Malloy, Carl Harrison, Andy Platt, Gary Rose, just to name a few from there. How tough were them players from there? But my two front rowers, Lee Crooks and Steve Rooks. Well, Lee Crooks, as a front rower who could pass the ball, not only mix it with the best, not only mix it with the toughest, but his ball skills was absolutely sensational. And when you look at the all-round game, not just with a ball in hand, his kicking game was brilliant. His tactical kicking, his goal kicking, and also as well from being a leader, he would always set the right example. And so Lee Crooks, as a front rower, all-round front rower, simply one of the best. My second front rower, Steve blocker Roach. What an absolute unit he was. And uh, I'll tell you what, Roachy, he didn't go all around the park. Roachy would just have a little small space, a little 10 metre space around the rook area. But boy, oh boy, there weren't too many people who wanted to go into Roachy's territory because you knew exactly what he was going to get. He was just literally like a wall. Stone wall is what Roachy was. And also to skill wise, absolutely loved the ball skills. Roachy at times, he didn't want to go into contact, he would just go to the line and just a nice little pop pass. Brilliant footballer and also as well, him and Lee Crooks. When you talk about toughness, when you talk about skill in forwards, not too many better than them two front rowers. And my hookers, well I tell you what, there's some quality hookers about as well and uh, when I look at the, uh, the ones I'm leaving out, James Laws, Colin Maskell, Lee Jackson, absolute sheer quality hookers there. But the one I've gone for, Benny Elias. I can't separate him, I would say, between him and Cameron Smith that's been the best hooker that's ever been. But when you mention with Benny Elias, and boy oh boy, for three years, he was an absolute freak. He brought a new dimension to the hooking game. He brought it around that vision and that uh, organisation and that awareness around the rook area. It was a move called two-step where Benny would go to the blind, come back to the open or vice versa and absolutely rip ripped the rook area apart with his vision, but it was just his all-round play. He was the biggest and best competitor you would want in the middle of the field. And I tell you what, if any team had a Benny Elias, they wouldn't be far off winning competitions. My second rowers who I'm leaving out, Dennis Bates, my captain in New Zealand in 90, Mike Gregory, Paul Dixon and Roy Powell. But my back rowing pair, again, it's from my Balmain teammates. And that's big Paul Sirenen and the man himself in Wayne Pierce. When he was playing against him, the mighty Wayne Pierce, just simply sensational. Running out wide, the speed of him, his ball skills, and also to his competitiveness. Piercey is up there with Elroy Anley from a point of view by being the biggest and best competitor I've been associated with rugby league, an absolute warrior. And then when you look at the second row partner in Paul Sirenen, what more can you say? He absolutely terrorised defences. And I can reassure you, when I was playing for Balmain for three years, it was an absolute delight to be playing outside him because she knew the damage he was going to cause. He was running opposition centres, they couldn't control him, and if they did, he had the ball skills to set the centres up myself, i.e., that's me why I finished, I would say, the top try scorer in the NRL with the distribution skills of Wayne Pierce and Paul Sunnan playing in the back row. A combination of toughness, speed and skill. My loose forwards, <laughs> again, leaving out quality loose forwards. But there's only one loose forward for me, and that's my whole teammate in Steve Norton. Absolute sheer genius. And what makes the difference of all these players, what I have picked, and make them champion players, is because they can see things on the rugby league field, what they are going to command. And when Steve Norton commanded that ball, you made sure you give it to Knocker, because one thing for sure you knew was going to happen, he was going to create a try. He was going to create opportunities, it wasn't just a skillful player, was it Knocker? It was tough as well. He'd mix it. He wouldn't take a backward step against anybody. And it just goes to prove the man himself 
winning the grand final with Manly in 1975. That just proves, from a point of view, throwing, showing in the, the great footsteps of the great Mal Reilly by quality, sensational moves forwards. Steve Norton, if you want again another man in the trenches to come up with that champion play, to come up with that match winning play, Steve Norton, as a loose forward, was that man. Let me tell you what, it's been difficult picking my all time 13. Now they're asking me to pick a captain. And when you look at the captains that are in that side, from Emory Anley, Lee Crooks, Wayne Pierce, and Steve Norton, but also two I've not mentioned one from there. So my captain and my all time 13 will be the scrum half in Peter Sterling because Sterling would just literally organise everything from there and also too as well come up with a champion play that's why Peter Sterling just gets my captain's pick thanks for asking me for this task of picking my 1-30 to 30, but one thing for sure listen fellas please my ex-teammates don't get a little bit upset annoyed because you've just missed out a touch just missed out a touch but one thing for sure if I had to pick a second 13 You'd be in that, fellas. You'd certainly be in that.